Remember that time when you woke up and you said, I've got so much traffic coming to my website. It's awesome. I have all the traffic in the world. My landing pages are dripping with traffic. It's just the best feeling. I don't need any more traffic. It's just amazing. Do you remember that? Of course you don't. It didn't fucking happen. Right? <laughs> what if you didn't need traffic? Right? What if you didn't need traffic to know that your page is good, whether it's bad, whether it's going to be a top performer, or it's not going to perform at all? Today I want to talk a little bit about the future of marketing, the future of conversion optimization, and then I'll bring it back to what we can do right now, kind of leading up to that. If you look at this uh, screenshot here, this is the Unbounce dashboard. The only important part of this is the blue button in the top right corner because the page is unpublished. Right? We have a machine learning algorithm we're building that will look at millions of landing pages and pages on your website, and it will be able to, and also thousands, tens of thousands that are the same as yours, the same industry, the same use case, and it will be able to figure out whether you are good or bad, better than the rest. And it will give you insights and information on how you can improve your page without a single person ever seeing it. Now, of course, we still need traffic, right? We need traffic for customers. But there are two sides to this. Uh, one of the great benefits is one of the biggest problems with optimization is small, medium-sized businesses can't run A-B tests. They don't have enough traffic. This will start to remove that problem. And so it's also about the traffic and behavior on your site. Click maps, scroll maps, these will be analyzed, turned on automatically. You won't need to do anything about it. So instead of waking up in the morning and thinking, oh, that dream was amazing, but it's not true, maybe you'll wake up and you'll get a message like this. Hello, I ran a scroll map analysis on your latest blog post. Modern connected systems where instead of that dream, you get this Slack message that says, if you take that CTA, that banner on your latest blog post, move it up to beneath the fourth paragraph where it's very semantically relevant and that's the hotspot of the scroll map data, it will increase your click-through rate by 118%. Would you like to do it? Just type yes. Because right? one of the fears people have is that machines will take over and they'll control everything. They'll replace our jobs. It's not true. They will just accelerate the access to insights that we can then act on. And it will forever remove the need to ask, what should I test? Which is the first question everybody asks when it comes to optimization and testing. This will be figured out for you. What you should test, where it is, what order you should do it in. And it will remove the need for all of this type of blog post, many of which I am responsible for. So none of that will happen anymore. OK, so what do you do? Like, what do you do? What does your business do? And how do you communicate that? I'm going to run through this page. I'm going to act like an impatient web visitor. And I'm going to scan this page, look at the headlines of subheads, try and figure out what it is they do. So what do we have at the top? Marketing software. Number one marketing platform, trademark. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, we trademark things that we invent or make up. So perhaps they made up this statement. Fuel your brand, exclamation point, trademark. These guys are really shitty at trademarks. I mean, imagine they actually were the number one marketing platform, then a competitor comes along, overtakes them, now they have to trademark number two, and it will just go on forever. Further down, market domination, award-winning, marketing software, and at the bottom, Number one marketing platform, trademark, marketing innovation technology, exclamation point, and in case you've forgotten, marketing software. I don't know if any of you have any clue what these guys do. I mean, when was the last time you went to the purchasing department and said, can I get some marketing software to do what? Marketing. <laughs> You're going to have to be a bit more <laughs> specific than that. Like, do you know how many marketing software companies there are? Specifically, 3,874 exclamation point trademark. <laughs> These guys are not unique. Well, actually, maybe they are. They're just doing a terrible job of letting us know. They're falling into the hype trap, which happens because of companies like Grey Goose Vodka. That we think we can just say we're the best, and that makes it true. It's not the case. So quick definition. 
Hyperbole is, without doubt, the single greatest thing in the history of the universe. And this is how people talk about themselves. And it's not useful, right? There's too much hype, which is why we made this little tool. If you've ever suspected that your boss might be the worst copywriter ever, and that your vibe proposition actually has no value, you need the de-jargonator. Simply click this little button, de-jargon this page. It will highlight everything on your page that is hyperbolic, and it will give you suggestions or insults or, you know, how to fix it. Next generation, are you building a warp drive? Beam this cliche up, Scotty. It's kind of fun. It's a little Chrome extension. You can just analyze your page. Uh, so you don't need to take any notes. Everything's here. This will have my slides after I get off stage. Um, and all the tools and everything I talk about, they'll all be here. So that's the only link you need to know. And I'll repeat it a couple of times. Also in the future, the copy will be analyzed as you type it. Because this algorithm we're making analyzes the words and the sentiment and the topics to figure out what's going to perform better. And this will happen automatically. Because the way we communicate, clarity is the most important, single most important part of the conversion equation by far. Fuck off doesn't mean go away. Fuck off means fuck off. This is how clear we have to be. <laughs> now, I'm not saying speak to your customers like that, but that's how clear we have to be. So three parts to this talk. First part, the clarity equation. What I've done, I've looked at everything I know, uh, great marketing experiences, and I've reverse engineered them. And I've added in data from Unbounce about landing pages, data from Wistia about video. They've been amazing. They give me a lot of, uh, a lot of the data that have, people haven't seen before. And I've brought these all together, reverse engineered it, and come up with a, an equation that kind of defines clarity. It's slightly ironic that it's about clarity, and that's not clear at all. But this is kind of how it is. It breaks down into seven sub-equations. Distraction, what's going on around your value prop to distract people from understanding it? Expectation, do you actually describe what's going to happen when you click your CTA? Readability, can you read it? Is it hard to read? Is it complicated? Is it difficult visually? Visual identification, if you take the main visual, your hero shot, in isolation on its own, can you tell what your product or service does? Immediacy can you do all in five seconds. Specificity are the details that are important about why you're different. Are they there? And hyperbole or lack thereof. Dervish for the acronym, which moves into this kind of chart. Now, I have an interactive calculator on that page that walks you through how to score yourself. That's perfect. You're probably going to get that. The good thing is, now I know I have a readability, immediacy, and a hype problem. Right? So I know where to focus my efforts instead of wasting time on things that don't matter. Again, it's all on that page. This is what it looks like. So it's a, it's a really ugly Google Sheet. Just go in, save a copy, and then you can go nuts. Uh, there are instructions all the way through of how to fill in all of these things. And it will give you that Dervish chart, and it will give you an overall score. And then you can start optimizing and making it better. That's a dead goldfish. OK, the goldfish is dead. The reason the goldfish is dead is because I'm sick and tired of listening to people say, oh, we have an attention span that's shorter than a goldfish. It's just that's not the important part. Our attention span changes depending on the time of the day, the mood, where we are, what we're doing. It's not that cut and dried. And it's not about the attention span. It's about how our, our lack of attention changes our behavior and how we use technology. Here's an example. This is how people find your business now. It's, it's changing. It's, a, it's evolving. So you might search for VoIP business phone systems. OK, that's what I'm looking for. And now what, then what happens is, well, you get these ads, and people put their finger on the command key on a Mac or control on a PC, and they do that. They click every ad opening up in tabs. Totally different. They might not even read the ads. They'll, they'll, go, they'll check, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I want, and just do that. And now they're in comparison shopping mode. And they'll go through each tab one at a time and go, eh, does it make sense? No, close. This one makes sense? No. And if you have to be the lucky one, you have to make sure in that first little window that you're the tab that stays open. So I searched for that. Uh, because I sent a survey out. Thank you for those who responded. Uh, someone has their, their, pay, their website in here. So this is one of the options that came up. 
And here's another one. I don't know if these guys are here. There we go. OK, thanks for being brave. That'll be nice. Uh, I'm going to come back to that later, but that's kind of what I did. I found those two, and I, I'm going to choose one of them. I'll show you why. Immediacy. Can people figure out what you do and care about it within five seconds? So I found, this, saw this page, and I'm like, hmm, it doesn't really describe what they do. So I ran a five-second test. If you're not familiar, you show someone a screenshot, five seconds, take it down, ask a question, and you see how much they can recall in that time. For this, I said, what is this page about? Just a bunch of generic answers. Only 6% knew it was business intelligence software. 6%. That's terrible. Right? So they score this tiny thing. Imagine that was you. Imagine people are coming to your website or landing page, and only that many people can figure out what you do. That's terrible. Your business is suffering. So I looked around the website, figured out what they actually do, did it, put it in there, ran it again. That's what they do, right? 42%. That's what you want. And don't think, oh, I want to get 100%. That's never going to happen. It's only five seconds. You want to do this and just try and make it better. Just try and get it up higher. OK, so immediately you can see we're optimizing. So back to it. OK, so I did a five-second test on these two. I said, I gave them the context, you are looking for business phone systems. That's what I said. What kind of phone systems do these, does this company provide? Business phones, right? There's, there's no specificity there. Then I did this one. <coughs> VoIP, it's right there. That was the thing I searched for. And this is the only one of the results. But the other one didn't even have the word VoIP above the fold. So they would have, would have lost in that battle in those first few seconds. And these guys would have won because it had that extra clarity. Now, I'm going to read this uh, testimonially thingy, thingy thing here. Uh, all right. Carousels are effective at being able to tell people in marketing. Carousels post accessibility issues for keyboard and screen. Really frustrated. Right? This happens all the time. People have promo sliders on the top of their home page. They have testimonial sliders that take things away from us. This is part of readability. Uh, it's called the motion reading ratio. Uh, so like how much of, what's the percentage of it you can read before it gets taken away from you? There are five parts of readability. I'll jump into just a couple of them. Acronyms can speed up comprehension, but they can also slow it down. Depends on how you use them. So I saw this Oracle page, and I was like, CFOS, OPT, for, I was like, ah, there's too many. I don't understand this. It made me pause. So of course, what do you do when you're confused? You go to Anagram Genius and see if it could figure it out for me. Apparently, that's what it means. It's just about as clear as it was the, the other one. But <laughs> all they had was a, a, a case problem. If you do it right like that, you're like, ah, now I get it. I can see where the acronyms are, and I know what they are. It's CFOs. It's not CFOS. This is not about like microchips or something. <sighs> OK, you guys are going to have to help me out with this one. Okay? Every time I come to the US, I'm walking around downtown, I see a sign that says this, and I, I just stop, and I'm like, what does it mean? Like, is Ruth Chris, or does, does Chris belong to Ruth? I don't understand it. It pisses me off so much. So I did the same thing. That's an acronym of it. I'm from Canada, and I hate Rush, so touch them all you like. OK, contrast ratio. This is the ratio of your text to the background behind it. I saw this page, and it took eight seconds before this came to a state where I could even understand what the headline was. Because it's got a background video. They're trying to be clever with the design, overly clever. It's really, really hard to see. So you can use this tool here. Again, it's on the landing page with all the links. You put in the color of the text and the background, and it gives you a score from 0 to 21. You never get to 21. doesn't matter. 4 is like crappy steak. 7 is triple A, according to the web accessibility guidelines. Anything above that is amazing. So this is 2.7, so that's really not very good. Uh, you can use this eyedropper tool, which makes it easier to find out what the colors are. But then in the calculator, you put the numbers in. You choose whether it has a background video, an image, and it will score it for you, and you'll see you know, what the problem is. Now, you might think, well, that's only a, maybe a little problem. Potentially, yes. But when you have 20 little problems, it becomes a big problem. 
Does anyone here remember the show Page Fights that we did? A couple of people. Okay, Page Fights was a landing page critique show we did on Google Hangouts between Unbounce and Conversion Excel. Pep Lyre was my co-host. We'd kick the shit out of landing pages. It was a lot of fun. Problem is, we couldn't figure out how to grow it. We couldn't figure out how to make it the business we wanted or the show we wanted it to be. You know, where's the ROI? So Pep jumped on growthhackers.com. Dear community, what would you do to grow this show? It's the first response. I'm glad I saw this on a lazy Saturday when I had time to immerse myself in this lukewarm shower of digital hipster parochialism seamlessly integrated with slightly veiled Sado programmer invective. Now, we never use words like that on the show, ever. We can't talk like that. This guy's clearly not a fan. But it made me think, well, this is so complicated to read. So I put it in readability-score.com. It's a great tool for analyzing your copy. You can paste in a paragraph or a URL, and it will analyze it. This one got an 18.4 from like 0 to just around 100, which means it's really hard to read. It also gives you a grade level. You have to have a master's degree for this, apparently. So it's a great thing to do just to figure out where you are. And it's not a case that you want to be perfect 100. That's not true. As we're learning from our algorithm, this is reading ease, what we can see is that there are sweet spots depending on your specific use case. Maybe your audience wants you to be at 71 because it's got enough complexity and ease at the same time. You can see there, the conversion rate goes up as the reading ease also goes up. Again, it's not a massive increase, but when you put all these things stringing together, it can have a significant impact. To fix it, title case that headline, increase the contrast ratio, turn off the autoplay on the slider, slider and just shorten your paragraph, simplify the copy a little bit. It's easy. Change it, score it, you know, and you'll figure out what simplicity actually looks like. Uh, conversation between two guys on a phone. I'll read it out for you. Uh, so how was the date last night? First date, went for dinner, and then I walked her home. Then I killed her in the woods outside her house and left. Killing her seems a bit harsh. Did you order the lobster and filet mignon at dinner? Kissed. <laughs> He's trying to type kiss. It's like an autocorrect problem. We've all had those. My point is, what we say and what other people hear are often two entirely different things. Here are a few examples. Or... Perhaps more Elton Speed. It's a death row pardon. Two minutes too late. Now that actually would be ironic, unlike every other line in that song. <laughs> Good luck getting that out of your head for the rest of the day. OK, I want to talk about feet. Does anyone know what this company does? Don't have a guess. Couches, shoes. It's an energy company. OK, some savvy customers are chopping their energy and their costs, and apparently their feet as well. This is also this one. Like, what do they do? Well, business, clearly, but every business does business, right? This is too generic. Let's have a look. This is be quite beautiful because it's in Portuguese. I just came back from Brazil. So even, you know, you, so it's a good exercise. You're like, not knowing what it says, I have no idea what it does. So there's a problem here with visual identification. Oh, I also, here's the problem with stock. Other than people saying, don't use stock photography, this is the real problem. I went to tineye.com, searched for that. 204 other websites are using that same stock image. So let's say, and they might be in your industry because they search for the same thing you search for, right? And maybe someone's been to one of those and didn't like it, and they see yours, and go, oh, not those guys again. You know, they may have a negative thing built up. That's why you don't use stock. So visual ID, if you separate it, look at it in isolation, can you figure out what your product or service does? Someone shared this landing page with me, this website, and my first question was, why is Larry King on it? 
More importantly, why is he shooting laser beams out of his thumb? That's kind of strange. So I thought, well, maybe other people don't know why he's on there. So again, I did a five-second test. I do this all the time because it's really rapid conversion research. Get these qualitative insights. What product do you think this company sells? Loans. OK, business loans is what they do. So the specificity is missing. It's not payday loans. It's not car loans. It's not mortgages. It's business loans. Okay. So I, I thought, do we have a Larry problem? So I blurred everything else out, ran it again. These are the responses. Meeting a guy, talk show, that makes sense. Something about old men, <laughs> doctor consultation, Viagra, <laughs> and just a lot of people who didn't have a clue. OK, so we definitely have a Larry problem, so I just deleted him. I just took him off the page entirely in Photoshop, ran it again. Business loans. I know he's a high priced endorsement, but you know, give him another job because he's not helping there. Just by removing him, people immediately got it. Right? It's, here's how you fix that. If you, see, if you see, if you run one and you figure out you have a problem, this, these guys again, with and without a caption on that image, because that's just a generic dashboard. Nobody got that, 60%. Now, don't just do that, because that's like a temporary fix. Or do it for a temporary fix. But it's a signal you have a graphic design problem. You need to fix the image, put some call outs, maybe talking about what it is, what it does. Then 0 to 60, that's a lift of infinity. This is how you do it right. This is a Scottish company that this is context of use, demonstrating what it will look like to receive and deal with this product or service. Right? It's, uh, you know it's going to be a white box of blue straps that has food from the sea and instructions on how to cook food from the, street, the sea, otherwise known as recipes. That is exactly what you need people to know without any description around it. And here's an, also why you don't use stock. This is a magazine. Two dentists, pages right next to each other, the same stock photo. That's just embarrassing. And which one are you going to go for? I mean, probably the cheap one. Right? And I was in Dublin checking into my hotel. I got my card, and they said, you're in room 324. So I go down the corridor to the elevator. There's a lady standing there. So we, I wait with her, and we chat. Doors open. I let her in first. So she goes in, puts her card in, presses 3. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to do anything. So I just kind of stand awkwardly beside her. And we go up to get to the third floor. I let her out first. Now I'm following her, though. I look to see the sign. I'm like, I'm following her down the corridor like some creepy pervert. And it's not until I see two doors in a row that I realize the pattern and I know I'm going the wrong way. But it's too late because I've walked her all the way to her door. She goes in. I wave awkwardly and go back to my room. <laughs> it, and I'm kind of flustered at this point. I'm like, that was embarrassing. I got angry at this sign. I thought, there's something wrong with this sign. So again, I ran an experiment. I asked people in five seconds, would you go left or right if you're in three, room 324? 33% of people went the wrong way. So I'm like, we have a design problem here. So I mocked this up in Keynote so I could make changes to it. The exact same result. We definitely have a design problem. Okay? So if you have a design problem, I have 23 principles of attention-driven design. The reason these are important is that no one's ever been taught how to design for conversion. Graphic designers, web designers are taught grid systems, typography, color theory, white space and a few UX principles, but not conversion. These are all about focusing people's attention on what you want them to do, your business goal, your call to action, whatever the goal of your page is. I use four of them to fix this problem, try to fix the problem. OK, so first, contrast. Make the headline appear differently, because these are semantically different. This is where you are. This is where you're going. Right? So oh, third floor, I know where I am. Move on. Grouping the numbers that correspond to the hour, I put them together, and I put some white space. 8% went the wrong way. Huh? Making progress. Added some interruption just to split them apart, this way and this way. Everybody went the right way. Way fewer perverts in the hotel, which is good for everyone. If you can identify, just like the clarity, if you can identify a design problem, you can use these principles to solve it. There's an ebook on that landing page as well. The nice thing about this is it allows us to establish a, a new vocabulary between marketers and designers, or marketers and marketers. Instead of saying, I don't like it, 
you can talk about why you don't like it or how you think you could improve it. Because design matters a lot, right? More, we know it does or we feel that it does, but it isn't talked about enough in the right context. It creates joy. You know, the first time you Shazam and you're like, how, how does this work? This is amazing. It's the greatest thing ever. Or you get like a Volkswagen, you close the door and say, like, oh, funk, like that really nice, satisfying sound. And it reduces confusion. Put your hand up if you've ever driven a car or ever been a passenger in a car. It's all about the right question. So you know when you fill up with gas, that arrow is really, really important, right? <laughs> this is massively sped up. It takes two and a half minutes. Someone else comes, uh, fills up, pays, and leaves before <laughs> it's even done. It's terrible. It speeds up repeatable tasks which is good for efficiency. I found another design problem over here. So this happens every day, all the time, many times, and that's the problem, repeatable problems. So I need to get in, here's the, here's the card reader, here's my card in here. Okay, sure, I can do that, but it's annoying, all right? I'd rather, see, annoying. I'd rather do this, but it looks like I'm humping the wall. I mean, it works. But, I mean, come on, it's, it's just move it from here to here, and I could, I could just walk past it, right? Or put it there. <laughs> I'm still numbing something, but you see what I mean? It's not difficult to fix these things. But when we combine design with data, that is the fastest path to delightful marketing experiences. And it's going to be really interesting to see how that happens as we're going forward. But if you're not a designer or a developer, you know, how do you create these mock-ups that I'm doing around these experiments? You know, if you don't have access to Photoshop or you, you just don't know how to do that kind of stuff, well, there's a simple hack you can use to help you do that. One line of JavaScript. All right, next con. This is the hack that I'm talking about. You paste that line of JavaScript into the address bar. For some reason, it strips out the word JavaScript. Put it back in. What it's done is it's made this page editable. So I can go in and make changes. Let's say, oh, let's make it on the 12th of November. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, and you don't need permission to do this. You can just do it yourself. It's just in the browser. It's not online anywhere. So I'm going to change the value proposition of the conference website to see if we can sell more tickets. OK, so what are we going to do? Includes a free hangover pass for day two. Right, because clearly that's going to convert way better than the original. Now, what you do, you take a screenshot of that, you go to usabilityhub.com, and you run a five second test. You upload your screenshot, and you ask a question What does this company? And then you get do? a bunch of responses back from the community. Now, I use it all the time. I'm not affiliated with them. We're just friends. But you get these amazing insights back. And you have to pay for it, but you can also do it for free. If you participate in the community, you do tests of other people's tests, you get free credits. So you can do all this stuff free without permission. It's really, really cool. Oh, and they have another thing called a preference test, which is like, which one of these do you prefer? It's not an A-B test. It's not scientific. It's just like, hey, opinion. So I was curious. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to be a blank slide because I forgot to put it in. Um, I asked people, I said, your boss has given you permission to attend a marketing conference in Scottsdale, Arizona. Which would you rather attend, the original or that one I just changed there? That's pointing to my version there. 18% more people chose that. That made me even more curious. So what else could we offer as part of the ticket to sell more tickets? How about a desert photo hike with me? Now, the chance of anyone <laughs> knowing who the hell I am is pretty remote, but I'm actually a pretty damn good photographer. So I thought, well, maybe someone would know. 8%, still improvement, not bad. Uh, how about a $100 voucher for the casino? Right, that'd be good. I'm still up over the last day. It's pretty good. 50%, this is good, right? We're making progress. How about a round of golf? There's some lovely courses around here. Big win, OK? So <laughs> organizers, just stick that in the ticket for next year, and you'll be, you'll be gold. Or 
<laughs> this is Unbounce. I never talk about it. Uh, you can build a landing page in there, and then you can make all these changes really easy with that and, and do all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I, I hate talking about my own product. Uh, we're based in Vancouver. We have a small office in Montreal where it's really cold, like really cold, like minus 30 cold. And I was there for two years, and I wanted to go on like a sunny holiday, a sunny vacation with my ex-girlfriend. I say ex-girlfriend because she's now my fiance. But. <laughs> Technicality. Uh, interestingly, we met at a conference because um, she'd seen me on page fights, had a bit of a crush on me, and we met at this conference. And then Pep, the guy from page fights, he's like, there's the ROI of page fights. <laughs> I kind of like that. OK, so I, I, I like this one. I want to book it. And I click, and it, go, it takes me to airtransit.com. I thought, oh, that's kind of weird. XP is usually better than that, but whatever. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, I want to I wanna book it. So book early and save, save up to $400 per couple. It's not a button, but it reads like one. So I'm clicking it, and nothing happens. I'm like, Ugh, this is annoying. And I look around, where can I, where can I click to book this thing? And then I look, and I see this thing down there. And with my 20 years experience, I know if I click this, a tray will open up with a call to action. A button will be hidden inside it. So I open it. Sure enough, there it is. There's two of them, in fact. And it repeats the statement, save $400. So I click it, it closes the fucking tray. <laughs> so I go back inside, I try the other ones. For a single parent, I don't have kids, but I just want to be successful at this point. I do this for like a minute and a half, just trying to find whatever pixel in there is interactive and will help me book this vacation. Nothing. <sighs> what can I click on? So I look up here, de sheer desperation. I look at the social share icons. Because I'm going to go to Google+, Plus, right? That's dead. Uh, I might email it to myself to say, never come back to this shitty website. <laughs> I probably should print it, take it to a travel agent. Can you, can you book this for me? I can't do it online. And then I see that. I'm like, why is there a QR code on this website? I have a QR code reader on my phone. They don't come by default. I'm just morbidly curious about shitty experiences. So I take out my phone, and I'm like, there it is. OK, I scan it, gives me a URL. And I'm kind of scared at this point as to where it's going to take me. But uh, you know, I've gone through all this work, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do it. I have seen QR codes on websites, and I have scanned them. <laughs> do you know where they take me? Back to the website. Which is exactly what it did, except now there's a button where I can buy it. I can spend three grand on my phone, not on desktop. Bullshit. It's total bullshit. There's way too much bullshit marketing out there. The first rule of CTAs, it's very simple. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's really obvious, Ollie. You know, everybody has a CTA. Well, they didn't. And also, we didn't sometimes. We've owned what is a landing page on Google for seven years, number one. But I looked at it, and we weren't asking people to do anything. It's just information, just being helpful. Uh, so I'm like, OK, we've got to practice what I preach here. So I took away the internal content links, deleted the side nav, and just added a call to action on the bottom. We know that the highest uh, conversion path on our site goes through the templates page. So we just said, hey, go to the templates page. 171% increase in people doing that just because we asked. Right? Look at the top 20, 30 pages in Google Analytics for highest traffic on your page, on your site. Go to them. I guarantee half of them have old content you need to update, and a bunch of them don't have a CTA. It's the easiest optimization you'll do. Every page on your website has conversion opportunities, right? And they all need a CTA. Future of marketing, this will happen for you. The analytics work and say, hey, you don't have these on these pages. I recommend you do this. Would you like me to do it for you? Right? That's where it's going to go. OK. Second part, and th these last two parts are short. Video. Now, uh, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to take everything I know about video, a lot of Wistia data, and I'm going to stitch it together to make a Franken. Try and just like morph it into something really impactful. Oh, because I do a lot of surveying uh, at events, and I see how much people are interested in these things. And you might think, well, I don't have anything to do with video. But 
the response I get usually indicate that you're, you're connected in some way. We have this thing in Unbounce, the responsibility assignment matrix, which is like who's involved in a project. So let's say it's a video project. Responsible, that's who's doing the work. Could be editing, script, uh, shooting, or whatever, whatever it is. Accountable, that's who is, whose ass is on the line, basically, for getting it done. Consulted, the experts you talk to. And then informed, who are you keeping in the loop? Right? So there are, I guarantee there's someone in your organization who's part of that matrix and is interested in video. So you can take what I'm going to show you back to them and, and show them. So I'm going to stitch this together. Here's our video. I'm going to keep it above the fold. People talk about the fold and being scared of putting things below it. In our research and the data we have, putting a call to action below it can actually be a good thing, because people hunt for it and see the rest of your content. And forms can be below the fold. Not with video. With the data, as soon as you go below the fold, engagement cuts in half. Expert, who you should put in it for increasing trust? Study that was done. Don't put your CEO in there. Don't put the government in there. Uh, look for someone tribal. It's something that looks like your target audience or an expert. Make it 540 by 400. That's the optimal size for increasing play rate. Could be if it's small, you don't bother. If it's too big, it's overwhelming. I don't know, but that's what the data suggests. Put a caption beneath it. If it's a compelling caption, people might not have their headphones ready. But if you make it sound interesting, they may plug them in and then play the video. Email capture, if you have it, 20 to 30 percent in or 60 to 70. It's called turnstile at Wistia. These are the best places to get the most opt-ins. You get four times the number of leads if you make that field required. You're going to piss more people off and get fewer overall watches. So you have to kind of balance that. Uh, Interestingly, though, if people do put their email in, they'll watch 50% more of the video, I guess, because it's an exchange of social currency. They've, they've paid with their email address, so they're more committed. And they have two more types of CT, an annotation. You've seen them on, on YouTube, right, where they float, these words appear, and you can click them. Uh, or they have a full screen CTA. Now, I've done a lot of research into the impact words can have on your call to action in forms, specifically. So I wanted to do the same thing with these to see how it balances with my research. So using the word click or click here or not saying it, not using it at all. Full screen CTA, like in your face, click is the best. Annotation, click here. My versus your. In the middle, my over there, your. Urgency, don't do it in the middle, do it up there. Exclamation point, don't do it there, do it up there. They are diametrically opposed. They're complete opposites in every single one of these. And it makes some sense, because if something's in your face, you want it to be softer. If it's over here, you need to scream for your attention a little bit more. The lesson here, though, is that you, know, you read a blog post about you know, 20 tips to blah, blah, blah. If you blindly implement that every way you can, you can damage your business. The lesson here is that every conversion opportunity is unique. Here's the, pay, the, the slides you can show anyone involved in video. This has all of that in there with the actual results, like 290% increase on the annotation by using click here. It's crazy. Uh, and there's also the unbounced form data with the same kinds of words. Oh, so you'd want to say up here, click here to get your thing now, exclamation point. Here, click to get my thing. It's very different. In the future, inside unbounced or whatever tool, you're typing your call to action, it will be like Google, and it will recommend these other things you should put in there. But it will have a conversion prediction as well, based on all this data analysis. That is going to change the world for marketers. Right? They're all unique. And this is connecting back to the human part. You know, we're scared of like, machines overtaking humans. How do we maintain the human side of things? I was critiquing this landing page for a photography course, and I got down to the testimonials, and I'm like, hmm, looks like stock photos, ironically, on a photography course. I start reading them. Megan has been a lifesaver. No, she hasn't. This is not Baywatch. Reach out to Megan is one of the best things I've ever done. You must have a pretty shitty life if that's the best thing you've ever done. Right? So it's, it's in the realm of hype again. I'm like, I'm starting to not believe you. Like, this is a great course. I researched all of these photographers. They're really good. They're all wedding photographers now. I found them online, and they're all great. But this makes me not believe it. You have to be really careful what you put inside quotation marks. <laughs> He's not helping anyone. <laughs> How mean is that? 
will let you join the family, but I'm never going to consider you one of my own. Right? The key to a great testimonial is showing the transformative impact of your product or service. Right? So how do you do that? How do you architect a great testimonial? Here's one like that, and here's how I would have done it. She's holding a camera. Like, ah, photographer. That simple. Makes it look authentic. Specificity with benefits. This is super key. After less than two in exposure, my understanding of how light works using ND grad filters and how to accurately capture light means I'm no longer freaking out at sunset trying to balance the sky in the foreground. Anyone who's trying to learn photography understands that that is a true thing and they want to be able to do it. You believe it because it's so specific. Transformative text. Number of sh great shots I get is three times higher. I want to take this course. Transformative images, before and after. We know that kind of thing works with like skeezy marketing, but like it works for everything. And maybe a video that also shows that. If you click on something, it has to come up in a light box. You can, there are some links that are OK on your page. If they move you around, up and down, or things in a light box, that's cool, especially if it's a landing page for a marketing campaign. Uh, do not take people away. Here's a chart of our data for lead gen landing pages. When the attention ratio is one to one, highest conversion rate. Attention ratio is the number of things you can do, the number of things you should be doing. You only have one goal for a campaign. So that's why if you have anything linking, put it up in a light box. And you can get all of the information to make that great testimonial just by interviewing your customers with this script. Again, it's on here. It's about nine questions. If you ask them those questions, you will have everything you need for an epic testimonial, and you'll have so much content for the rest of your site. It's a really simple exercise. I shared this with uh, Rand Fishkin, and now Moz are doing this, some other companies. It's a great way of getting insights. All right, one last little story. I ordered something online. It was a health product. It came, and it was the wrong thing. So I emailed support. I'm like, hey, you sent me the wrong thing. And they're like, yeah, we know. We sent yours to someone else, and you have theirs. Uh, if you print this label, put it on the box, mail it. When we get it, we'll put it in the inventory. We'll check it's back, and then we'll send yours out. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. You messed up. Send it right now. Well, that's not our policy, sir. I don't care. Send it now, or well, you've lost me as a customer. They eventually agree. It shows up. But there's like 20 samples around it. They're trying to suck up at this point because they, they messed up. And I'm like, oh, OK, that's nice, until I saw this one. I'll uh, zoom in a little bit. <laughs> so much for humans like being really good at this stuff. The only part that's relevant are those three letters there. <laughs> so that made me think of this event we put on called Digital Agency Day. It was an all-day thing of online things, webinars, and it was really, really good. This was the landing page for it. If you leave, there was a pop-up to get the recordings of all of the sessions. That's a lot of free, like, that's a lot of value. Man, people are like, oh, pop-ups suck. Don't use pop-ups. They're evil. You know, they're just terrible, terrible things. No. I'm tired of hearing that. Well, here's the results, actually. We, I have access to all of this data as well. From, uh, we, we acquired a company mainly for the talent. But uh, an average one, 2 to 3.5%. Good, 5%, excellent, 8%. That was 19%, which was unheard of in all the data we'd seen. We repeated it in a German, a German event, 27%. Right? Because it was relevant, valuable, well-timed, and designed to delight, because it's what people actually wanted. Right? They couldn't attend. They want the recordings. Technology is not the problem. It's how we abuse technology that's the problem. It's the manipulative tactics and the psychology we put into these things that is ruining the internet. It's not the technology. We have to stop blaming it and start being a bit more reflective. If you do you know, the good cop, bad cop thing where it's like, get this, or don't get it, admit to being a jerk face, or whatever, or I hate high conversion rates, agreeing to something you don't believe in, that's manipulation. It's not the technology's fault. It's our fault. We have to do better than that. The, uh, What's the word? Algorithm. Uh, we can put our value systems into that. Like we have core values at Unbounce, seven of them. Moz has tag fee, if you're familiar with that. You put those inside the algorithm. When it makes suggestions, they can be in line with your brand and your core values and actually make you more delightful and more likely to acquire your ideal customer. Thank you very much. I know it's late in the day. Uh, again, that's where all the stuff is. Thank you.